Now, Rino, give me your own view about who you think uh, is best. Do you have a person you, in mind that you want to vote for and why the choice of such a person? Yes, thank you very much, Shion, for organizing, you know, these platforms. Stretch your question. Yes, I have uh, a candidate who I support to be Nigeria's next president. And that person is a person with competence, character, and capacity, you know, um, with ability and commitment to solve our issues as a nation. That ticket that represents inclusion, that represents equity, that represents justice, um, not just for, for, for Nigerians, but then for young people, uh, for women, for members of other tribes, for people from diverse religions and, and lands, you know, and that person is His Excellency, Peter Obi. Hmm, interesting. So if you compare Peter Obi, uh, the man you say has all of these qualities, compared to other candidates, why do you think he's better than its competitor on the, in the race? Well, I think that's a tough one, but I'll try to answer it um, in some minutes. You see, Peter Obi represents uh, a better future. He represents a possible future than, than his competitors. I ask, I will ask that, or I will ask Nigerians, when you look at all the candidates, what do you see? Do you see competence? Do you see character? Do you see capacity? When you look at Peter Obi and, and you compare him to his competitors, just like you asked, um, it represents these three things, competence, character, and capacity. And I'll give you three reasons for that. Nigeria's biggest problem today are the economy, insecurity, and corruption, which the current president, uh, our General Muhammad Dubuari, campaigned on in 2015. And he has failed on every count. And if you look at it very carefully, our country is currently experiencing the spread of insecurity, you know, due to a lack of political will, um, ineffective security agencies, and a president who is barely visible. And this has given us the image of an ineffective leadership, you know. Nigerians today need a credible, competent, and capable leader who can address our issues. We need a present president, not somebody that will not be, you know, present for more than half of his term. And then we can see the parties that have come severally. They failed to deliver on their campaign promises to fight corruption. They failed to deliver on their campaign promises to, to, to secure the country, to stabilize the economy, even to stop university strikes, you know, um, in, in, in more than several years of governance, not to talk of the NSAS protest in 2020. So one of his competitors as well, like you asked, um, is on record for also blaming victims of, of the Lekki massacre that happened in 2020. Another counterpart, you know, is famous for paying leave service to situations of, of public concern. I mean, recently there was a, a, a deleted tweet um, condemning the killing of a female student who was killed in Shokoto. Also, also, candidates from major parties in Nigeria, historically, have always chosen running mates from other regions and religions in order to be able to foster a sense of security. His major competitors, Peter Obi's major competitors, do not represent the image of a united Nigeria. And Nigerians have suffered heavily in the hands of bad presidents. We do not need leaders who will further widen our divides. Peter Obi will reduce those divides. Two, before we can begin to solve these issues, these issues of insecurity, corruption, joblessness, we can go on and on. We need a visionary and transformational leader. And then it's a process, just like when you're looking for a job, the first stage is you package your CV, you say, these are my qualifications, and submit it. Then the second stage is when they've looked at your CV, they say, okay, you get a chance of an interview. You now get the opportunity to be able to tell the employer why you think you're the best one for the job. And then they can hire you. Not to forget that the basic tenet of a democracy requires that citizens are to ask questions of their leaders, whether they're in office or they're aspiring to come into office. And then there is an obligation from those leaders to be transparent. If you want to lead anybody, mm. you have to be prepared, you know, to, to, to be straight for an intensive analysis of what you've done, what you're going to do, and what qualifies you to do it. And there cannot be two ways to it. Peter Obi has been speaking at every opportunity he gets to Nigerians, unlike his competitors who have concluded that they have Nigerians by their throats and that we will vote for them no matter what, regardless what they do, they are going to win. So Nigerians must not make the mistake of thinking that any politicians is too good for their questions or query. Regardless of how attractive uh, the, the CV or credentials of the politicians may be, 
the citizens must ensure, and that, that's the basic uh, tenet of a democracy, that we understand who we want to vote for. Before I end, also we need a leader with, um, with, with who is critically and clinically sound, with the right character, skills, attitude, and uh, attributes to turn things around. We do not need candidates who have been sleeping all over campaign meetings. You know, some of them have even refused to attend debates. Candidates who are incoherent, speaking in languages we don't understand. That is clearly a disaster in waiting. Those people will not solve the problem you know, of you, our country. You are shaking tables. And, you are shaking and, tables. And the third one, be, be, before I end, we you are shaking tables, tonight. Reno, tonight. So, yeah. Is, we should also ask ourselves, <laughs> what is motivating all the candidates to run for office? You and I should ask ourselves, is their aim just to become president by force, by fire, or they truly want to serve? Are his competitors, those are Peter Obi's competitors, are they promising a bright future for you and I, for the older generation, for this generation, for the future generation, for you, for your children? Peter Obi represents a bright future. And all people with sound analytical mind can discern what we stand to benefit as a nation through Peter Obi. Hmm. Thank you. You've shaken tables and, uh, well, let me allow, because you, you didn't mention names. Uh, and I don't know whether you want to mention it because... This is a platform where Nigerians can, it's for the independent mind, so where Nigerians can speak their minds freely. Indeed. Show, show quickly, show quickly, quickly, yeah. show. Please, can the, um, what's this, uh, what's, um, these two panelists that were quarreling, can they just apologize to each other and, and shake hands across so that people will know that it was just. Would that, would that just, be a um, virtual handshake? I think the gentleman yes, yes, really yes. wants to apologize to the lady. I'm not sure. <laughs> Ali is a let's, fantastic, let's fantastic person. This. Rinu is a fantastic yes, let, person. Let, let, For people, let, people let, share. Let, she, she, called, she called me a political let, job. No, but let, let, let's let um, you know. Hold on, 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 let us let it hold go. Can I? Can I? Uh, hello, on. hello. Let's Renu, Renu, you are, you over the course of the over the course. Ali, 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 hold on. Hold on now. No, Renu, you are crossing several lines. Renu, you are crossing several lines. You are crossing several lines. She talking about Is she stupid? No, I don't do that now. Don't do that. Renu, you are crossing several lines. You haven't. Renu, Renu. What go? She's been using some words that are that are very unprofessional and immature. I want to see. I'm not your younger sister. I'm your co-fellow. Guys, hold on, hold on. We need to be partial. No, 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 don't let them hold on. Too hold on. To no, Ali, hold, hold on. Hold on, Ali. Can you dare you? Let, let's go. No, don't hold say on. that. I wanted us to. No, no, no. Ali, you don't say that. How dare you? Please, please. Let me witness when I took my leaders to the party to clean us for them to do right. No, we know you are not. Don't let them. Don't let them. Renew. Renew. We need to go. Renew. You are the boss. Renew. Ali, that's Renu. okay. That's Renu. okay. Ali, that's Renu. okay. Renu. Guys, Renu. Guys, Renu. Guys, we need to, we need to go. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you've heard submissions from different sides, navigating differences in conversation, especially trying to win others to their side, can be quite tasking. But in all of these, if you cannot persuade others before the election, you're definitely still entitled to your one vote. So, will you be? Queuing behind your choice or choices on the 25th of February and March the 11th. If you do not vote, do not complain. Well, I may not agree with that assertion, but that is what some people believe. And I dare say, if you do not vote, well, you do not have the right to complain. But to address sure. the elephant in the room, let's talk about those who are of the voting age but would rather choose watching movies, playing football on the street, or any other games over being part of the change process. I'm also talking about those who would rather do a long thread about bad leadership, governance, or policy in the country than go out to vote. You are concerned about the situation of things in the country, but not motivated enough to change it. You are part of the problem. In that case, let us all be ready to bear the burden of apathy. Let's us imagine being stuck with the wrong person for a term by any measure. 
four years is a long time. And every election cycle like this one present us with the opportunity to decide on current situations, our future, and the future of our children. Thank you so much, everyone, for being part of this conversation. I dare say that Nigeria is the end goal. Nigeria is our uniting force, and we cannot allow our country to go down. Thank you so much.